Welcome, Commander, to the best trade routes in Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Have you ever wanted to learn how to do trading in Elite Dangerous Odyssey like a pro? Well, this video is for you. Trading can be done in any size ship as long as you have the cargo racks and space to be able to stuff all the loot that you buy. Obviously, the bigger the ship you use, the better. We are going to be using the glorious cutter. Do you need the cutter to do this? Why, no you don't, Commander. You just won't look as cool. Don't worry, Commander. Later in the video, I'll show you how to track down these awesome trade routes in Elite Dangerous Odyssey. You're going to find out one of the best items to buy are these ergonomic treatments. Now, I don't even know why people need these so much, but a lot of people need these. Most of these awesome trade routes in Elite Dangerous Odyssey will be under 40 light years away, and sometimes you can get really lucky and find some really good flips that are just one jump 20 light years away. My best profit is going to be in Tau City, which is just two jumps. Look at that cutter. Look at that cutter, it's amazing. Oh yeah, and I guess fly safe as well, Commander. Obviously, if you can pound out as many trips per hour as possible, you're gonna make more money. So I'm gonna show you a couple tips and tricks here in just a little bit that's gonna speed up your process while you're doing trading in Elite Dangerous Odyssey. The very first tip I'm going to show you is how to engage your FSD early while you're still kind of in the Star's Corona, which is kind of dangerous. You'll overheat your ship if you don't have your ship engineered properly. As soon as your FSD cools down, immediately engage it. Now your ship's going to get totally and completely butt hurt, but before that happens, just use a heat sink and then you're good to go. In most cases, this is going to save about 15 to 25 seconds of your game life. Now, that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but you know, we're talking about pounding out a whole bunch of these in a row, and when you can stack up a whole bunch of time savings, you know, the better over time. This next tip will literally shave minutes off your time whenever you land at a space station anywhere. Engage the super cruise assist on the space station that you wish to land on. Just don't line up with it all the way because if you do, you're going to be flying in super duper slow. And ain't nobody got time for going super duper slow, so we're just going to let the super cruise assist take over here in a little bit, but not quite yet. We're going to just go balls to the wall right up until we get about seven seconds away. At about 7, when it flips to 6, I'm going to hit my 75% speed key. Now we're going to coast for a little bit. If you do this right, Commander, you will not do a loop of shame, which, you know, is totally shameful. At one light second out, I'm going to mash my forward key as well as line up on the target. What this is going to do is slingshot you forward. Technically, you would be ending up in a loop of shame, but since we have the Super Cruise Assist, it pulled us out and cha-ching! Made it to Graham's terminal way ahead of schedule thanks to the heat sink and super cruise assist trick. Now, if you haven't heard of the super cruise assist trick before, you're welcome. It's going to save you millions of years of your life playing Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Trust me. As soon as I land, I like to refuel as well as restock that heat sink I used. Now it's time to hit up the Starport services. We'll head over to the commodities section so we can make some money. If you remember, we forked out 3.4-ish million, and now we're going to be making 17.6 million. That's some pretty good profit margin for about six minutes. But wait, there's more. Now, this isn't just a one-way trip. We're going to be making profit on the way back as well. Although it's a little bit more expensive, it's still profitable. As I let my advanced docking computer take over, you know, the most lazy commanders are the smartest commanders. We're going to head back to Anlave and pawn off all the silver that we just bought. If you are doing trading in Elite Dangerous Odyssey and you do not own a fleet carrier, always take these trade routes that have a return voyage back to your starting point. It's going to make you a lot more money per hour. See you later, Graham Station. Guess that later is probably in just a few more minutes. Because, you know, space trucking doesn't have anything to do with being chill or laid back or anything like that. No, it's about pounding out as many round trips as you can, as quickly as you can. Now, I mean, I guess if you want, you could do this all laid back and lazy style and just use the super cruise assist all the way there and stuff like that. But you're not going to make as much money, Commander. And that hurts my feelings. And the last thing you want to do is hurt some content creator's feelings that you've never met. So make sure that you do the heat sink trick. Not using the heat sink trick would be bad enough, but if you don't use the super cruise assist trick after I just showed you this from now on, Commander, man, like, I don't even know what to say. I, I, I probably wouldn't even make videos anymore. I'd be that butthurt. Here's the thing. Space is unimaginably huge, and I get that. I get that. 
I just don't want to feel the effects of how huge space is at the very, very end of my journey. Anytime I want to land at a space station. So yeah, years and years ago, I figured out how to do this super cruise assist trick, and I've been sharing it with commanders ever since, because you know, ain't nobody got time for taking freaking month of Sundays to land at a space station. The most beautiful thing about space trucking is you can start out small with something like the hauler, you can even use something like the Adder or possibly even the Cobra Mark III. Heck, you can even work your way up to the Type 6 Transporter or even the Glorious Python. Heck, you can get the Type 9 and eventually someday you can get yourself the Glorious Cutter just like I have. If I remember, we forked out about 29.2 million for that load of silver. Now let's see how much we're going to be able to make off of it here sewing at Surrey. Now these return voyages generally aren't as profitable as your original trip, but we're going to make 35, just under 6 million. In about 12 and a half minutes, we ended up making a little over 20 million, which isn't too super horrible. Now if you have a fleet carrier, oh my goodness, you are going to be so filthy rich, it's going to be absolutely space disgusting. This part of the video is going to be dedicated to those who do own a fleet carrier and probably have a really gigantic ship like mine so they can make as much money as humanly possible, which is like far too much money. It's totally obscene. All loaded up with treatments again. This time we're going to be heading over to Space Cheddar 1 instead of flying all the way out to the Graham Space Station. Of course, you'll be flying to your fleet carrier instead of Space Cheddar 1, you know, unless of course you want to buy all my ergonomic treatments and then sell them at the space station where my fleet carrier is conveniently located right next to. Yeah, you know. Of course, none of that can happen until I get my fleet carrier totally and completely stuffed to the gills with all these freaking treatments. But first, we're going to have to make a whole bunch of round trips back and forth and back and forth. Ultimately, what I like to do is I like to fill my fleet carrier up all the way. Of course, I do have some tritium storage in there, but I like to fill it up as much as possible, then go park it right next to the very best cell location. Generally, you're able to get about 25k per each one, so I like to price mine around 13 to 13.5k each. That's still huge. Doing it this way on my end, I'll still be making at least three times my investment, which is really good, while offering other lazy space commanders a really good deal. For them, they're going to be able to go back and forth and back and forth in less than a quarter of the time. On my end, I don't mind doing the back and forth and back and forth to load up my fleet carrier, but oh my goodness, I just don't have time for the back and forth and back and forth to sell. It's well worth it to have other commanders do that for me. I mean, it's win-win. I spend half the time making the whole bunch of money that I want to make, and they get to spend a whole heck of a lot less than half their time making a bunch of money as well. So it's, you know, win-win. It's just this part right here. Have to have this part right here. <sighs> What's funny is, you know, we have teleporters that teleport us in and out of our ships in an instant, but we don't have anything like that to teleport cargo instantly. I kid, I kid, FDev. You know, ship interior sure would be awesome. Well, might as well fill up this fleet carrier because it's not going to fill up itself. There we go. Space Cheddar 1 is totally and completely loaded to the gills with a whole bunch of those treatments. I'm now going to plot a course back over to the Tau Ceti system. We're going to park right next to Graham's terminal. Now, as you can see, there's already fleet carriers here trying to do the exact same thing I'm going to do, except for I'm going to be parking right there at Bell's Wreck. So how do I find all these glorious trade routes? Well, it's quite easy, my dear Watson. You're going to head over to Inara.cz, and there's the trade route that I'm using right now. Now, don't freak out about that being a white zero. A white zero means an infinite amount of supply that they'll buy. The best trade routes will have a huge supply as well as an infinite demand, and then you're going to want to look for a return voyage trip as well to the exact same station as long as you don't have a fleet carrier. Finding the trade routes is super duper simple on Inara. All you have to do is go to the main page, and once you're on the main page, what you want to click on is data. Once you click on data, a little tab will pop up, and what you're looking for is the trade routes tab. Clicking on trade routes will take you back to that screen I was just at. Now put your nearest star where you're located at. I happen to be at Ceos, and I like to set my max distance to 40 light years. And sure, you can set it for less or more, but I find 40 is really good because I can get there in two jumps. 
if you want, you can input your cargo capacity and always, always, always set the max price age at eight hours. You can set your minimum landing pad. I'm always in a large SIP, so I have to have a large landing pad. And the max distance to station, set that for at least a thousand light seconds or less. You don't want it any more than that. Definitely set use surface stations to know. Ain't nobody got time for that. Set the minimum supply as any. Definitely want to order by best profit and display results in the standard list. From there, you can click search and it's going to pull up all the glorious trade routes that are in your area. Hey, look, there's the one that we just did. The other thing you want to pay attention to is pick the updated ones with the least amount of time and also look at the profit per trip as well as the profit per hour. Now the profit per trip will be accurate. Profit per hour, not so much. You're actually going to be making more when you're using those tricks that I showed you in the video. Check out this run right here. It's been up for three hours. Now commanders have already whittled that supply down to 42. That's horrible. So, you know, it's not the most profitable because there's nothing left to buy. This next one, again, seems really profitable. There just really isn't enough supply there for all the commanders, as well as your return trip. Just, you know, it's going to run out far too quickly. Hopefully this video helped you to find the best trade routes in Elite Dangerous Odyssey. So now you know how to do trading like a boss in Elite Dangerous. All my love to my Patreon and YouTube channel supporters. I love you guys. I guarantee if you found this video helpful, you're going to love this next one.